Hello, I'm Alex and today we are going to see how you can host your own OpenSUSE mirror. Uh, to host a mirror we have a few requirements, minor requirements I would say. Uh, we need rsync to transfer files from OpenSUSE servers into your own server. We need a web server to serve files to users, you can use Nginx, Caddy, Apache, whatever you prefer. Uh, we need some disk space, it really varies by what and how much you want to host in your mirror. Um, if you're a public mirror, you want to have a high or unlimited and fast bandwidth uh, because mirrors can serve terabytes of data monthly. So be prepared. And honestly, there is no real other special requirements. We can work on, on virtual machines, containers, and per metal. And you can run your preferred OS as well. About space, how much space do you need to host a mirror? It really depends on what and how much you, you want to, to, to host, how much data. Uh, for Tumblr, for example, for Forex86, around 140 gigabytes for repositories, OSS, non-SS, ISOs, and appliance images. Uh, for Leap, just Leap, one, one, one release of Leap would be also around 140, 150. If you want uh, one stable leap, like 15.5, slow, row, and, and tumbleweed, you would have around 2 terabytes uh, for the repos, ISOs, and appliances, and 5 terabytes if you want to include ports, source, debug, and everything else, basically. And if you really want to host everything, you would need, I believe, around 40 terabytes, but that goes daily. So, uh, be prepared um, for that. And from where you can fetch the data. So to become a mirror, you need to fetch files from another server. We have a few servers that you can use. For example, we have stain main repos.opensource.org. This is open to anyone and it's a fast server. It does not include all the data from the, the main servers, but includes the data that you need. So this is the preferred uh, place to, to fetch data from. We have also rsync.opensource.org. It's also open to anyone, but it has limited bandwidth and a limited uh, connection number. So I would suggest that it's more suited for testing purposes. Uh, for production purposes, it would be rather slow to, to copy data from this. If you are in North America, there is an open server to anyone that is provomirror.opensource.org. This is best suited for people that are in North America if they are having issues to fetch from the mirrors in Europe. There is also stage.opensource.org. This has all the data or should have all the data, but this requires registration. So it's not open to everyone you need to create a ticket and request access to the server. And you can also fetch from other public mirrors that are close to you if they provide rsync capabilities. For example, in Brazil, you can sync from uh, C3SL. They are possibly the biggest mirror in South America, or at least in Brazil. And in Czech Republic, for example, you could mirror from Vodafone, CZ. Uh, before we mention space requirements, in, in theory, you can mirror anything you want. It depends on your needs and space available. It is possible to customize what you want to sync with our sync rules. Um, and you, you can use the rsync rules to be picky 
on which files and folders you want to mirror so you can select a module and ignore for example old open source releases like you can ignore you can create a rule to exclude uh, 15.1.2.3.4 and just keep the, the the latest releases you can also create rules to ignore uh, certain architectures because for users sometimes it doesn't really make sense to 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 have all the architectures available, most users will be either on x86 or, or on on ARC64, on ARM64. So you can create different rules. You can also exclude if you don't want other packages or other things. You can create custom rules for that. <clears throat> if you don't want to be picky, it's possible to fetch entire rsync modules. Um, there, there are a few modules that starts with OpenSUSE dash and the name of the module. Uh, the, the size varies by the module from a terabyte to uh, to everything, I would say, to 40 terabytes. Uh, if you want like uh, OpenSUSE full with factory, this includes uh, slow row, leap and tumbleweed uh, with with sources and everything, uh, this would be around five five terabytes. So you could use one of these modules, but create rules to fetch 300, 500 gigabytes a terabyte, or if you have space, two terabytes. It really depends. Um, it really depends how much space you have, but you need to create certain rules to not fetch everything. Or if, if you're comfortable with the size of a module, you can use that module. But remember that modules can grow in size. There's no guarantee that they, they will keep the same size. So they often grow in size because there's always things being added. And you need some extra space. Because while you're, doing, while you're, you're copying the data, you need to keep the old data and and the new data until the, the old data is deleted. So you need a little bit of buffer for our sync to work, I would say. Uh, which way you, you can sync files and in what frequency you should sync files from our servers. So the default way that most mirrors are doing is to pull files from, from one service, as I mentioned the service before. Uh, for every, like for stable releases, you, you could, I, I would say you could potentially sync every hour for rolling releases. I would say that you would need to, to sync every couple of minutes because it's changing a lot. And frequent pools reduce synchronization size time and, and size. So if you're, if you're thinking every 15 minutes or half an hour, it's going to be better than thinking every two hours, because every two hours, there's going to be a lot of data, potentially a lot of data. If you, you have tumbleweed or another fast pacing distribution, uh, our servers also support pushing files. In in this in this way, you you don't need to to pull anything. Uh, our servers would push the data to your servers. The data would be always up to date, but this requires a written access on your mirror and also require registration because we need to know where to 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 push the files to. So. I'm not going to cover this, I'm just going to cover the standard way that is, is it's to pull files from one of our servers with our sync. But if you're interested, you can open a ticket and send an or sending an email to open a ticket to, to request more uh, information about this. Now that we know what to sync, where to sync and how frequent we should sync. What does it look like for an rsync command? Uh, this is not 
like the mandatory command, but this is a command that I, I use to, to sync uh, the files into my mirror. So you could copy this, but you need to replace the, the upstream server and the module uh, and the final storage location that matches your, your needs. If you want to use rsync rules to limit which files you fetch, you also need to add the argument include from or exclude from or exclude include rules and create appropriate uh, rules and rule files for this so you can filter out what you don't want and <clears throat> ideally you should run their sync command uh, on cron regularly uh, with the desired frequency that you want and if you want to host with the files with nginx i i have a small snippet here that you could potentially use uh, the, you should optimize your configuration to host binary files because most of files are going to be rpms most but basically all files are going to be rpms uh, there are a few files that are uh, metadata, I would say, or repository information, and you should add a cache control header. So these files are not cached. These are XML, ASK, and keys that are our metadata related files. You could also create rules to prevent spam, so, such as rate limit, but be aware that. Uh, the servers can get a lot of requests doing an update, so you should create some general rules uh, for your server so you don't ban users that are actually trying to do a, a, a distro update, for example. And once you have your server set up, if you want to become a public mirror, one that users can use, you need to register your mirror. So a mirror, a registered mirror is going to be available in the official mirror list that is in mirrors.opensuse.org. Zipper is going to, to find these mirrors and is going to fetch from it. Uh, public mirrors are scanned by OpenSUSE servers to, to check the status if they are still up and alive. Otherwise, we remove these mirrors. So if your mirror flicks for a while, we remove it temporarily. And if it goes back, we add it back again. And we also scan which files are available in your server because we need to know uh, where the files are to send the users to the correct mirrors because not all mirrors have all the data. So we need to send the user to the appropriate uh, mirror. And this is all done to open source service, namely a uh, mirror cache that redirects users to the closest available mirror that they have to their location. So if there is a mirror close by that has the data, it's preferred over a mirror in, in a different state, a different continent, for example. Uh, mirror registration is, is fairly simple. Uh, you just need to send an email to admin at opensource.org and include some basic information about your mirror, such as your name and email for in case there is issues, we need to contact you back. Your your mirror URL, so this can be, the users can fetch data from it. And also who is sponsoring this mirror, because often mirrors are sponsored by companies, universities. So you can also uh, have it available in the mirror list to, to know who is this person in these mirrors. And of course, IP addresses to, to whitelist. And that's basically it. Uh, thank you. And I hope you enjoyed this short presentation of how to, to become a